Imagine for all the billions of people who've lived on Earth that have been around since the first humans walked on the planet, all people can be categorized into 16 personality types. 16, just like I have here. So each one of us can be put in a nice little bin here, nice little container, this one. And you know, maybe this one is like another person that I know. And this person over here really belongs to the people in that container. And there's somebody over here in this container and so on. And oh, maybe I got one of these wrong and this person really belongs over into this container. Well, the point is, can you imagine that we could just divide up the entire world into 16 category types like this? 16 personality types. Sounds pretty amazing, doesn't it? Well, that's what the makers of the widely used test, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or the MBTI, apparently believe. The Myers-Briggs company sells about 2 million assessments annually based on this belief and makes about $20 million a year. Many of you have probably taken the test or some other quickie version on the internet that purports to tell you which of the 16 types you are. Well, I hate to break it to you, but hardly anyone in the psychological science community believes in this test. In fact, most scientists condemn the MBTI as pseudoscience. I even heard about this back when I was in my first psychology course in 1981, and yet the Myers-Briggs is still around today. In this video, I want to show you why this is essentially an utterly worthless test that otherwise reasonable people and even Fortune 500 companies pay good money to take, yet there's hardly a shred of independent sound science to support any of it. But before we get to why this is a junkie measure, let me tell you more about the measure itself. The MBTI is based on the theories of Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist from the early 20th century. According to him, we can understand people's behaviors based on the personality type they belong to. Now, even though people at that time believed that personality was based on random variation, Jung thought personality was orderly and distinct and therefore reflected something innate. Now let's stop there for a moment. If Jung was right, we should be able to measure all sorts of personality characteristics and find they just cluster into nice orderly types, right? But does that make sense? Take for example his idea that people are either extroverts or introverts, that we're one or the other type. That what makes a person one way or the other, he said, is that we get energized by outwardly focused behavior, like being outgoing and talking to friends in the case of the extrovert, or that we get our energy by being more inwardly focused, like wanting to be alone in the case of the introvert. By the way, modern personality psychologists do not define extroversion or introversion this way. You don't get energy by engaging in one process or the other. But more on this in a future video. You might want to subscribe right now to my channel so you won't miss it when I post that video. Anyway, there's a well-established measure of personality, the Big Five Inventory, which includes a measure of extroversion and introversion. I'm going to show you some actual data that comes from giving it to about 500 people. The scores on the scale for the personality dimension here ranges from one completely introverted to five completely extroverted. And this is a frequency distribution. You can see how individual scores line up. Notice how it's a normal curve with most of the scores on the slightly extroverted side of the midpoint. If Jung was correct, we should have seen two distinct clusters, more like this, where we'd have introverts on the left and extroverts on the right. But we don't. In fact, we have just run into a big problem with this MPTI test. Nearly all personality traits are like this. Here's a few more from the big five. Openness. Agreeableness. Conscientiousness. Now, I don't have time in this video to explain why the normal curve keeps coming up here and in other places in nature, but I do talk about it more in one of my stat lectures that you can find up here. What I can say here is that normal curves happen when a bunch of variables have random effects on something. So that means that Jung was absolutely wrong. Personality has a huge amount of random variation in it. Now back to the Myers-Briggs. Who were Myers and Briggs? They had no formal relationship with Carl Jung whatsoever. In fact, you might be surprised to learn that they had no formal training in psychology whatsoever. They were a mother and a daughter who, after reading Jung 20 years after the fact, began creating their indicator during World War II in the belief that a knowledge of personality preferences would help women entering the industrial workforce by identifying the sorts of wartime jobs that would be most comfortable and effective for them. 
The Briggs-Meyer Type Indicator Handbook was published in 1944 and changed its name to Myers-Briggs Type Indicator in 1956. Ever since, it's been used in all sorts of settings, schools, workplaces, the military. Yet, as I said before, it has little scientific validity. So how did they use Jung's untested and plainly wrong ideas about personality types? Well, they said that your personality consists of your preferences on each side of four personality dimensions. Extroversion or introversion. Intuition or sensing. Feeling or thinking. Perceiving or judging. Now, you answer some questions for each of these, and then the resulting pattern of preferences puts you into one of the 16 personality types. Okay, but now you're probably saying, but Eric, this test has been given millions of times. It's based on the writings of a famous psychiatrist, Carl Jung. Surely it has some validity? And sadly, I have to answer no. There are at least five reasons why you should stay away from this test. First, as I've pointed out, there are no personality types. Our characteristics don't fit neatly into nice dichotomies. Thus, the test is missing an important connection to other information that we already have about personality in the human mind. Second, it doesn't predict anything. Even though Catherine Briggs and her daughter Isabella Myers developed their indicator to help place women into wartime jobs, it didn't work. It has never really worked. In fact, the Myers-Briggs company president has said that the MBTI is not intended to be a tool for predicting performance or outcomes. The manual from the company expressly states that it should not be used as a predictor of job success. Why? Partly it's because it has fairly low reliability. Take it on Monday and you'll get one type of personality and then take it on Saturday and you might get another type of personality. That's not good. Third, it lacks objectivity. Good personality questionnaires include items to assess whether the person responding to the questionnaire is exaggerating their responses or making socially desirable responses. The MBTI does not include any such item. In fact, the way that the test is reportedly validated by the Myers-Briggs company is that when the person learns what their type is, they're asked whether it matches what they think of themselves. Surprise, surprise, the Myers-Briggs company says that people usually think it does. It's not much different from the way horoscopes work. It's full of flattery, confirmation bias, and vague descriptions. Fourth, it's been solidly debunked several times by researchers and scientific bodies. One of the top experts in psychometrics, Robert Hogan, wrote, most personality psychologists regard the MBTI as little more than an elaborate Chinese fortune cookie. There is one journal that publishes work on the MBTI called the Journal of Psychological Type, but the studies there are weak and the journal itself is supported by sales of the MBTI. Fifth, it could be unethical to use this for any other purpose than to show what junk science is like. Back in 1991, a National Academy of Sciences committee reviewed all the data on the MBTI, which by then was nearly 50 years old, and concluded that there was no justification to use the MBTI in career counseling programs. One of the leading journals in this field, the Journal of Counseling and Development, concluded in 1989 that the MBTI was not ready for a routine use in counseling, yet here we are in 2023 and it's still widely used by some professionals. Now, one common reason you'll hear for giving people the MBTI at a work retreat or some other team building event is that giving it will allow everyone to have increased self and other awareness as everyone learns about their personality preferences. But this assumes that it's giving accurate information in the first place about who we are. And it's clear from what I've already said, that's just not the case. As Stein and Swan said in their excellent 2019 paper on the MBTI, erroneously thinking that the true self has been revealed could also lead to negative outcomes. When people think their true preferences have been revealed, they expect pursuing those passions to be easy and find other things less interesting. 
You might say, well, isn't it just harmless fun imagining that this test can tell you how to dress and what books you should read or even whom you should date, as was the case in South Korea during the COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, by December 2021, half of the population of South Korea purportedly has taken the MBTI. Dates were made based on these four-letter combinations, and businesses popped up to make money from the MBTI craze. Sure, by chance, some of these people might have found their right partner, but I don't think matching up based on the four letters from the MBTI had anything to do with it. So as I finish up, let me reiterate. The MBTI is not used by most professional psychologists or researchers due to its lack of scientific validity. The test itself has not been shown to consistently measure what it claims to measure, and there are very few peer-reviewed studies to support its effectiveness. In fact, some studies have shown that the MBTI is no more accurate than chance. Have you had any experience with the MBTI yourself? Was it accurate? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're really curious about psychology and what is scientific or not, I think you would really enjoy this video about why Freud and also Jung are not considered scientific by today's standards. So thanks for watching and until the next time, please stay curious. Bye.